Welcome to the 30th week of this year's In Times Like These recap. Now let's get into this, starting with Yvette Mitchell. After Zeke Franklin rescued her from Keeve Burke, who attempted to force himself onto her, Zeke demands that Keeve leave. Once Keeve leaves the Mitchell estate, Yvette demands that everyone in the party leave. Zeke begins to question what Yvette plans to do about the events which just occurred. Since Yvette lied about Max, she doubts anyone would believe her about Keeve. Because of this, she decides to keep quiet, asking Zeke not to tell anyone about the events which transpired. Even though Vivian Jones shows Pacho Torres the DNA test, confirming that she's Lorenzo Russo's daughter, Pacho is still in disbelief. She goes on to reveal that her mother was the cook for the Russo family and that Lorenzo got her pregnant since he and Clarice were experiencing a difficult time after their daughter Elvira lost her life. Vivian also informs that she overheard her mother speaking about how she was forced out of town after confessing to Clarice that she got pregnant by Lorenzo. Because Clarice exiled Vivian's mother, that is the very reason why Vivian decided to attempt to take over Russo Jewelers. As for Vivian's mother, Vivian explains that her mother wanted nothing to do with the Russos after giving her life to Jesus Christ. Pacho embraces Vivian, sympathizing for all that she's been through. Vivian appreciates it, stating that Clarice is going to pay and that taking over Russo Jewelers will make up for it. As the two gaze into one another's eyes, they kiss and end up sleeping together. At the Russo estate, Lorenzo Russo hears his wife Clarice vent about how frustrated she is that Gianni and Heidi placed the family in public scandal. She's upset that her son and her son's wife cheated on one another. Yet, Lorenzo is unaware that Clarice is triggered by their son's choices because she never told her husband that she discovered his own infidelity and hid the fact from him that he had a child somewhere in the world. The moment Dr. Terry Murphy opens the door to ask Harley Drake what she wants, Harley immediately slaps Terry across the face. Terry is informed that Harley just witnessed her kissing Harley's son, Alan Russo, demanding that she end the affair immediately. Because Alan is a legal adult, Terry tells Harley that it should be up to Alan to decide when the affair should stop. Harley warns Terry that she will be her number one enemy, stating that she's not an adversary that Terry wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with. Pacho makes a visit to Vivian, confessing to growing feelings for her after they slept together. Vivian feels like they can't be together since she's worried it would prevent her from successfully taking over Russo Jewelers. He suggests that they see each other in secret and become a powerful couple after she becomes the next CEO of the company. Upon hearing this, Viv isn't opposed to the idea, then the two kiss. When Alan Russo meets with his mother Harley at Theodosius Palace, she reveals that she knows he and Terry are having an affair. Alan goes on to ask Harley if she'll tell Finnegan. She doesn't plan to say anything to Finnegan, but pleads with Alan to end his affair with Harley. Alan refuses to listen to his mother's advice, then walks out. Vanessa Dorval and her friend Ulisa Torres helps out at their church for vacation Bible school, and they're both impressed with how great Max Russo is with kids, especially Vanessa. Vanessa begins speaking with Max, who is happy to see that Vanessa is smiling after she had to endure being stalked all summer. She expresses how grateful she is to have God, family, and church family to get through it. Vanessa goes on to tell Max how much she appreciates him praying for her, and he assures Vanessa that he'll pray for her for as long as he lives. Arriving at Quinlan Franklin's apartment, Nichelle Torres confronts her boyfriend Zeke about attending Yvette's party and not telling her about it. Since Zeke can't tell Yvette about how Keeve attempted to force himself on Yvette, he only explains that he tried to convince Yvette to convince Nichelle that he wasn't hooking up with Yvette. Despite the explanation, Nichelle questions why she had to hear from other people that he was at the party to begin with. Since he couldn't get Yvette to speak with her again, he felt like there was no need, also admitting that he felt like she would get mad. Agreeing with Zeke, she's amazed that he did it anyway. Zeke tells Nichelle that he could have denied ever being at the party. Nichelle questions how he would be able to lie when there were witnesses, 
questioning if Quinlan was only trying to see the best in him when they last spoke. Confused, Zeke asks Nichelle what she spoke with Quinlan about. Nichelle tells Zeke how Quinlan stated that his issue wasn't with another girl, but with something else. Once Zeke asks Nichelle if Quinlan explained even further, Nichelle gives Zeke the opportunity to explain. Zeke is adamant that he's not cheating on Nichelle with Yvette again. When Nichelle asks what the issue is, Zeke suggests that the issue might be that Nichelle can't trust him. Angered, Nichelle warns Zeke that he should open up or lose her for good, giving him by the end of the week to tell her what's going on. To cover up the crime he committed against Yvette, Kiev tells JJ that he and Yvette never slept together and that they broke up. He goes on to tell JJ that Yvette will be sorry for turning him down, which concerns JJ. As JJ goes on to advise Kiev to leave dating alone for a while, Kiev feels like JJ is being hypocritical since JJ seems to have feelings for Ulyssa. Keith goes on to rant about Vanessa liking Max. Seeing how upset Keith is, JJ suggests that he leave. Once Keith is outside, he rants on an incel form about how he feels wronged by Yvette and Vanessa. Udell and Wanda arrive back at the estate, and once Yvette notices that her parents returned, she quickly embraces them, being troubled being alone after Keith attacked her. The couple notices that something is bothering their daughter, Wanda and Udell explain that they didn't bring her to Martha's Vineyard because they didn't want her there, but couldn't let her go after making false accusations against Max. Since she truly realizes what she did against Max, Yvette feels like she should admit to lying to the police, which Wanda and Udell forbid her from doing. Annoyed, Quinlan Franklin asks Pacho what he wants. He tells Quinlan that he wants to offer her the chance to tell her side of the story about her affair with Gianni. Pacho goes on to tell Quinlan that if she gets a good reception, then he'll offer her with her own news program. Quinlan is reluctant to the idea, but Pacho suggests that she think about it before making a decision. Alan meets with Terry, explaining that they have a huge issue with Harley finding out about them. Terry informs Alan that she already knows. Since his mother found out about them, Alan promises to get his mother Harley not to tell the Russos about the affair. Terry questions how Alan will do that, stating that Harley's main goal is for them to stop seeing one another. Alan reminds Terry how rocky his relationship with Harley is, feeling like his mother wouldn't go against him that way. Even though Alan is trying to look at the brighter side, Terry feels like Harley would be satisfied as long as she's out of Alan's life. Since neither of them want that, Alan is determined to make sure that they stay together for as long as they can. Terry fears that if Harley ends up telling the Russos, then he won't want anything to do with her. Concerned, Alan asks Terry why she would say that. After flashing back to Isidore speaking about his grandfather Dante, all Terry says is that she knows for sure that Isidore will do whatever it takes to turn him against her. Alan assures Terry that nothing in the world would ever make that happen. Embracing his lover, Alan promises to get them through this as Terry is concerned that if the Russos find out, then Isidore will tell Alan the truth about Dante. Heidi enters Owen's office, informing him that Wanda and Udell came back from their vacation at Martha's Vineyard, surprised that he didn't know. Owen informs Heidi that he and Wanda are no longer friends. Intrigued by this news, Heidi states that she's not surprised by it at all. This causes Heidi to question if he ended the friendship because Wanda seemed dishonest, or if Wanda ended the friendship to keep him away. Instead of answering Heidi's question, Owen asks her to leave. Before she leaves, Heidi tells Owen that she would feel sorry for his friendship ending, but finds it hard to sympathize for the very people who came after her son. In her office, Heidi informs her husband Gianni that Owen and Wanda's friendship is supposedly over, wondering if something intimate happened between the two. Gianni feels like they're one step closer to getting justice for Max. When Quinlan arrives at Ben's office, she informs him that Pacho gave her the opportunity to share her side of the story about her affair with Gianni. Ben asks Quinlan if she accepted the offer. 
Quinlan answers that she didn't reject it, stating that the world needs to know that she regrets her affair with Ben's father. She goes on to ask Ben if he'll have an issue with her, speaking up about her own life decisions. Ben replies by telling Quinlan how he thought she would be fighting to save their relationship rather than saving her career and reputation. Quinlan questions if she has to sacrifice her career and reputation to ensure that they stay together. Another option Ben sees is that Quinlan could let it blow over. She agrees, but also states that she can't allow her career to crumble by someone bringing up a past, which she refused to acknowledge. Zeke arrives at Theodosius' palace, where Nichelle asks him if he's ready to come clean about everything. Reluctantly, he reveals to his girlfriend that he's still watching X-rated videos. Nichelle is baffled, questioning why she thought he stopped, reminding him that he admitted to watching X-rated videos the same time she found out that he cheated on her with Yvette. He tells Nichelle that he stayed silent because of that fact, unsure of how she would handle it. Despite hearing Zeke's explanation, Nichelle isn't sure if she can buy it. Zeke is adamant that he's being honest. Nichelle wonders if he's being honest with himself. When Zeke asks his girlfriend what she's talking about, Nichelle wonders if he also kept it to himself because watching X-rated videos is the reason why he can't bring himself to sleep with her. Zeke denies Nichelle's claim, but she reminds him that she's competing with a computer, wondering if sleeping with her truly was a disappointment. Just as Zeke tries to assure her that it wasn't, she tells Zeke that she doesn't believe him, especially since he has been dodging the truth for months. Even though Zeke tries to apologize, Nichelle tells Zeke that all he had to do was be honest with her from the beginning, since it's clear that he has an addiction, which started when he was 11. Having an addiction is something that Zeke denies having. Since that's the case, Nichelle asks Zeke to keep his distance until he can admit that he is an addict. Outside of the mall, Vanessa is about to walk to her car, then is met by Kiev. Vanessa proceeds to ask Kiev what he wants. Kiev goes on to tell Vanessa that JJ is refusing to talk with him, wondering if she could speak with JJ. She tells Kiev how sorry she is to hear that he's having issues with JJ, but she doesn't feel comfortable getting in the middle of it. What Kiev claims is that she wouldn't be getting in the middle of it, but that she would be saving her brother's friendship. Just as Vanessa tells Kiev that she's got a lot on her plate to get involved with JJ's issues, Kieve wonders if Max Russo is keeping her occupied. Confused, Vanessa asks Kiev what makes him think that Max is the reason why she's too busy. He tells Vanessa that everyone can see that she likes Max. Vanessa tries to make it clear that she and Max are only friends, but Kiev feels like she wants to be more than friends with him. Not willing to talk with Keith for another second, Vanessa points out that she's already dealing with too much. Then Keith tells Vanessa that if she's worried that her stalker will send her more letters, then she's worrying over nothing. Confused, Vanessa asks Keith how he knows that she's being stalked. Keith claims that JJ told him, Vanessa is adamant that's a lie because JJ promised he wouldn't. Claiming that JJ is a terrible friend, Keeve tells Vanessa that her brother broke his promises. Vanessa is certain that the only people who know are her family, Ulisa, Max, and his family. She goes on to think about Max and Ulisa considering that Keeve is the stalker, then remembers Keeve handing her a teddy bear. The memories trouble her as Vanessa is troubled by the realization that Keeve is her stalker. Can't get enough of the crazy world of in times like these. Then, treat yourself to a binge watch of in times like these. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. You're not ready for what's to come, but tune in anyway 